What's going on everyone? I'm Chirag and welcome to this video tutorial. So guys, in this tutorial, I will take you through on how to set up Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab for the development purpose on the EC2 instance. So here we are going to use the Ubuntu 20.04 AMI. So let's get started and spin up an EC2 instance. So I am assuming that you have already logged in into AWS Management Console and once you are there, navigate to EC2 Management Console and from there, click on Launch Instance. Now here as a step one, we need to select the AMI. So as I mentioned, we are going to select Ubuntu Server 20.04. So select that. Now here within instance type, I'm going to select t2.micro, but you can select any other instance type as per your requirement and say next. Here in step three, we are going to leave everything as it is. Say next, add storage. Here I will say 10 GB. You can enter whatever number you want as per your requirement. Say so next, add tags. Here I will add a name tag saying Jupyter Dev Instance. And say next, configure security group. So here we are going to create a new security group. I will name it as Jupyter hyphen SG. And here we will require port 22. And from source, I will select my IP. Then we are going to add another rule. Uh, we need to add port double eight double eight for the Jupyter. Again, from source, I will select my IP and I will say review and launch, launch, select the existing key pair. If you have one, if you don't, then you can create a new one and download it. So I have this flask.pem. So I'm going to select that and I will say launch instance. So here, as you can see, our instance is up and running. So now we are going to SSH into that instance. So for that, we are going to copy the public IP before address and navigate to terminal. I will simply say SSH hyphen I stands for identity file and the identity file is flask.pem in my case, followed by the username. So here the username would be Ubuntu at the rate the IPv4 public address and we will say enter. And here we will say yes and shortly we will be into the instance. So as you can see, we have successfully logged in or SSH into this instance. Now the very first command that we are going to run is update that is sudo apt hyphen get update. Now uh, Python 3.8 comes pre-installed in Ubuntu 20.04. So we will quickly check the Python version. So we will say Python 3 hyphen capital V and it's Python 3.8.5. So we are good with that. Now we need to install pip3. So we will say sudo apt hyphen get install python3 hyphen pip. So pip is the package manager that we will require at later point of time. So now as you can see, uh, python pip3 or the python package manager is installed successfully. Now we are going to install python virtual environment because here we are going to create the virtual environment and within that we will be installing the Jupyter lab or the Jupyter server. Right, so we will say sudo apt hyphen get install python3 hyphen venv that is virtual environment. I will say yes. You can also install conda if you want. You can create the conda environment instead of the virtual environment. But here I will be using the python virtual environment. So I will say python3 hyphen m followed by venv followed by the directory that we want to create in which all the packages uh, or the environment would be configured. So I will simply say py env. So this command is basically for the creation of the virtual environment. So I will say enter. So now if I do ls, then here I will have the directory that is py env. Now we need to activate this environment in order to use this. So I will say source py env bin activate. Now here, as you can see, uh, the environment is activated. Here we can see in the parenthesis, the name of the environment that is py env, right? So now here within this environment, we are going to install Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab. So I will say pip3 install Jupyter Lab. So basically Jupyter Lab is uh, built upon Jupyter Notebook. So it will install all the dependency that is required to run Jupyter Notebook as well as Jupyter Lab. So I will say enter. So now as you can see the Jupyter lab is installed successfully. Let me clear this out. 
Now here uh, we will generate the Jupyter configuration. Now to generate the Jupyter configuration, the command is we will say Jupyter notebook hyphen hyphen generate hyphen config. So this will basically uh, create the configuration file and it will give you the path that where it has created. So it's under home Ubuntu dot Jupyter Jupyter notebook config dot py file. So here you can configure all the variables or the parameters that you want. So we will have a look at it later basically. Now uh, the next step is to configure the Jupyter notebook or the Jupyter lab password. So the command is we will say Jupyter notebook password. So this will prompt us to enter the password. So I will enter the password here, say enter, verify the password. So basically this password you will need uh, while you try to access the Jupyter notebook or the Jupyter lab, right? So now we have successfully configured the password. Now the next step is to go ahead and run the Jupyter lab or the Jupyter notebook. So here I will say Jupyter hyphen lab hyphen hyphen IP, I will bind it to 0.0.0.0. I will say hyphen hyphen no browser. So basically uh, the hyphen hyphen no browser will start the notebook server without opening the browser. And if you want to give the root access, then you need to pass another parameter that is hyphen hyphen allow hyphen root and say enter. So as you can see, uh, the Jupyter lab is up and running. So now what you can do is you can copy the public IP address, open a new tab, paste it over here and say colon double eight double eight. So now as you can see, now it's prompting for the password that we have set. So I will enter the password over here and I will say login. And here we are within the Jupyter lab. Now you can get started by creating the notebooks or you can use the terminal or whatever you want, right? So this is your Jupyter lab console or whatever the UI that it provides and you can get started. So similarly, like we ran Jupyter lab, uh, we can also run uh, Jupyter notebook if you like. So I will clear this. So now here the command will remain the same except that instead of Jupyter hyphen lab, we will say Jupyter space notebook. So I'll say enter. Now it's up and running Jupyter notebook. I can reload this by simply saying the IPv4 public address colon double eight double eight. It will prompt for the password, enter the password, say login. And this is your Jupyter notebook that is up and running, right? So this is how you can also run Jupyter lab as well as Jupyter notebook. So now uh, here we need to take care of one thing is that let me show you now uh, what if I go ahead and close this terminal or close this SSH session then what will happen it will eventually also halt this uh, Jupyter notebook command that is running and you might not be able to access the Jupyter notebook over this URL uh, if this terminal has been closed right. So what we need to do is we need to run this Jupyter notebook command as a part of the background and maybe in the child process. Right. So for that, we need to add two more parameters within that command. So let's see how we can do that. Now let me clear this out. So here within this command, we will add no hub. So we will say no hub Jupyter notebook. And at the end, we will say ampersand. Now what this no hope will do is no hope will help to continue running the script in the background even after you log out from the shell, right? And what ampersand will do is it will run the command in the child process, which is basically child to the current batch session. So now if I say enter, then as you can see, it's running in the background and we are able to access this terminal or we can also close the session with this terminal, right? But now if I do ls, then you will find a file saying nohub.out. So all the logs, all the Jupyter logs, you will be able to find within this nohub.out file, right? Now if I go ahead and run this, it is accessible, right? So guys, uh, this is how you can uh, configure or set up Jupyter Notebook or the Jupyter Lab environment for development purpose within your EC2 instance. So guys, that's all for this tutorial. But here, uh, since we are using HTTP, right? So if you look at this URL, it's not secure and it's HTTP, right? So basically it's insecure. So to make it secure, we need to have SSL in place. 
So either uh, we can use third party SSL certificate or we can use self-signed certificate, right? So guys, uh, that is something I will cover in the next tutorial. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then I can please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.